I asked Logan at the last minute to read that for me because there's a little, I picked off a little bit more than I normally do for a sermon, but as you can see, I think this area right here, there was no place where I could just cut it off. I wanted to get this all in here. The importance of it and how, the, if you could see this, it's by faith. Without faith, the, this doesn't make any sense. As a matter of fact, we, we see that today how bad things have gotten. You give them more time, sin doesn't get better. It just keeps on getting worse. This uh, verse 26, for this cause God gave them up. See, this is, this is what happens when those who do not want the Lord, it comes a point when he gives them up, death. If, if, it's not, if God's not hanging on, if God's not giving you what you need, you will not, you, the, the plunge is, there's no end to it. Amen. It's God who, if you're disconnected from God, you're, you're not going to, you're not going to make it on your own. Amen. There is a, the, the, the fall is so great that death is, this is what it, the end result is. This is showing that God is a point, that he's doing this work. This, this is, it's all about God. And it's all about what he, he is doing within this salvation that he has established. <clears throat> you know, we see this even in uh, Matthew 7, 20, um, 2 through 23. It says, In thy name have we not done many wonderful works? But Jesus said to them, I never knew you. You depart from me, you that work iniquity. See, the... They ran around doing things in the name of Jesus, but they never knew. They, knowing God, is being with God, staying close to God, having him in our knowledge, this is the point. Not going off and doing our own thing. We've got enough of that going on today. In the name of Jesus, all kinds of things are going on. But they don't know God. They, they come up with who they think God is and how God should be for them. Well, my God allows me to act in this certain way. And my God, and the, well, the God that I serve is, is in this, accepts this. Well, there's only one God. And this is the way it is. God does not have any, if, you, if you're living in sin, he's going to let you go. If you don't want to keep the knowledge of God in your mind, he's going to let you go. It's he is going to do this. And, and when, when that happens, well, here we go from, uh, from uh, verse 27 here all the way down to 31. The plunge is so deep. And no one's beyond this. For anyone to think that without God, well, I could be a good person. No, you see, this is the, the Holy Spirit is very modest, but at the same time uh, deals with this. That this is the way it is without God. There's no one good. None. God's doing the work within man. And without God, this is, this is, this is really, I mean, when you look at what was, what was said here, there's many people say, well, I would never, never, I could never do some of these things. Don't think too highly of yourself, brother. If you allow yourself to be pulled away by the world, pulled away by the conversation of this world, because if somebody says, well, God just loves you, it doesn't matter, as long as you're happy. Hey, you know what? You're happy doing what God hates? Well, he's going to love you anyway. That's okay. No, sir. You, there's no end to how far you will plunge. And without God, you, there is no turning back. It's God that keeps us righteous. It does matter how we, it does matter how we live our lives, because the way we live our lives is is really an overspill of how much time 
we spin with the knowledge of God in our minds. You're not going to live like this when you're living close to God. It's not even possible. Those who say they love God, but they live in this manner that the Spirit is talking about, they really, they hate God. They hate God. They hate his ways. They don't want to have anything to do with them, and God has just let them go. God does not and will not accept the people that live without him. We live in a day that God has given up a large body of people to do and to live in a way that is not natural. It's not the way God made things to be. It's pretty obvious some of these things that are, are said here that this is just wrong. Yeah. And how could this be? It's because they did not keep God in their knowledge. Their minds were not set on the Lord. It doesn't matter what the excuses are. I was born this way. You weren't born this way. You were born into sin and you needed Christ Jesus and you rejected the one that God sent. You rejected God. That's why you are the way you are. You live in righteous and holy is because you're connected to God, not because of something you've done. You're living ungodly and the, everything the Holy Spirit spells out here, it's because you're not living for God and you hate his ways. God made a man to be with a woman. God ordained it to be this way. And for the world to say, no, we don't like that. It's because they don't like God. And they don't like his ways. The fact that people can not have children should tell you something right there that's wrong. It's not really, it doesn't take a scientist or a great learned man to figure this out. You reproduce because this is the way God put men and women together, and you're productive that way. Amen. You do anything outside of God, you're unproductive. It doesn't matter what area of life you're in. If whatever you're doing, you think it's successful, but you're doing it without God, you're unproductive. The only, only productivity that happens is because you're doing it in the order of God. It's because you're doing it in the way of, that God has set it up and he's established it. And it will be productive not only here and now, but what the work that you're doing is going to proceed on to eternity. Amen. This is a productivity that's going to continue to grow. That's how God works. Now... When you work on the outside of the order that God has established, it doesn't matter what you're doing. It's unproductive, and it's going to die. See what happens when God gives, uh, gives people up to this? Death is a result. The end result is always death. So people can come up with all these excuses. But the thing is, without God, death is a result. This is sodomy, and it goes against nature. The way God intended it to be. The way God has set it up. He, he is a God of order. There's an order the way God has, uh, he did, the way he works. He, nothing is out of order. If it's, if it's out of order, it's because they've gone away from God. Yeah. They've left God, and that's where it, ha that's where it goes out of order. The men leaving natural use of the woman burned in their lust for one another. Men with men committing what is shameful. Yeah. See, we're living in, now this will tell you something right here, brethren. We're living in a time that has gotten so bad that the things that should be shameful, now they're out and open with it. And they're proud. They talk about how proud they are to come out. And talk about these things. It's shameful. Yeah. There's nothing proud about it. Yeah. It's shameful and it's going to end in death. This is what happens when a people live without God. It doesn't matter what they say. They can say all day long, but we do love God. This is the way, this is just the way we are. We love, we still love God. Today we have churches, brethren. They're, they're sodomites. 
and they have, church, they have built a church saying that they are Christians. That's how bad it's gotten. They say they're Christians, and they have ordained ministers that they call that are sodomites. This is wicked and evil and shameful. But that's what happens when given sin time. It doesn't get better. It doesn't get more productive for God. It gets worse, and it goes down more and more. So we see here that God is the point, not people, not individuals. I just recently heard a, a, a guy preaching that his main emphasis was us and that we are so special. That, and basically what he was saying is you just can't do anything wrong, that God's going to love you no matter what you do. You can turn your back on God, and he's just going to love you. Where did he get this in Scripture? Where did he get this? God's the point, not us. If, if, you, if you turn your back on God, you're done. You've got nothing to stand on. Your, your fall is going to be so great, you don't know if you're ever going to come back. There's no guarantee once you turn your back on God. There is no guarantee. This is, this is a lie in a, in a, in a, from the pit of hell that tells people, hey, God's going to love you no matter what. Well, you, you stand on judgment day and give an account for why you told people that that are going to be condemned for eternity. This is strong, I know, brethren, but there's a very strong thing that's going on today. We talked about this with Brother um, Michael talking about Babylon. This is, this is a, uh, an evil thing that's going out throughout the churches that is telling people, hey, you're okay. You're not okay without God. You're not okay without his son, Jesus Christ. If you're living without God, you're in a bad position. And you, there's no guarantee you're going to come back. Amen. It is not okay to live a life of perversion. No matter what anybody tells you. They will not be accepted into the kingdom of God. So how good is that? When someone says, hey, it's okay. God loves you anyway. But you're not going to be accepted into the kingdom of God. What, is God going to love you all the way to hell? What kind of love is that? I heard someone say that one time. God will love you straight to hell. What? This doesn't make any sense. God does make sense. He, he is a God that has an order in the way he does things. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor Idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, that's men who act like women, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Today we have a, a society that we are living a part of that is strongly pushing against this. They even are trying to come up with, even though we have laws that you can't, you're not supposed to kill people. Even though we have laws that it says you're not supposed to hurt people. Now they want to make new laws that say they're called hate crimes. So what they do is, now if you hurt somebody, they can track that back to a preacher preaching to you about Romans. And saying, that person hurt that person because of, no, it's because of sin. It's because of sin is why this happened, but they want to so much say that this is okay. That they want to establish it in society. That this is so so okay that if anybody gets hurt because they're a sodomite, let's just call them to what it is. It's because if somebody has told somebody that that was wrong. God said it was wrong, brethren. Amen. That's why it's wrong. God has an order in the way He does things. To all who think that it's okay to live a shameful life and God will accept them, they are just deceived. They're, they're deceived. This is a, a foolish thought. 
Satan has worked hard to make it a matter of choice and who loves who and how they love. It doesn't matter how, as long as they are happy, it's okay, God loves you. It's, it's an unconditional love, don't you know? That God just loves you no matter what. This is evil teaching. Because the result of them doing these things is because they hated God. They hated his ways. They did not want to retain him in their knowledge. And they had a desire to seek out sin and to cultivate it and to build an appetite for it. And God let them go. That's what, that's the truth. This is what the truth is. And to sugarcoat it, you're an evil person to do that. God cannot allow sin. It was God who gave them over because they refused to acknowledge him. And because they were not thankful for what God has done. God will not say this is okay. This type of behavior is a judgment from God. God will give them due penalty, as a scripture we just read here, due penalty for what they have done. Brother, we have people today who instead of looking to God to help them to turn from sin, they try to make excuses. Even though it goes against nature, the very nature, I mean, it's obvious. That shows you how blinded they are. That they go again, I mean, you could just sit there and go, that's not right. That's not even close to being right. They said, no, it's right. It's right for us, maybe not right for you. No, it's wrong. Turning their back on God and the order that God has set things up. It goes against what is natural. The penalty for such things, such sins, are immediate. We know this to be true. We have all types of diseases that are not in the marriage between a man and a woman. It should not be not obvious that there's something wrong here, that you could get d- death diseases that don't happen within a man and a woman between that God has established and put together, that should be obvious. But because it's not obvious, it's obvious that God has let them go. That he gave them up. Gave them up. And so now they can't even see the obvious. The things that are natural, that it doesn't make sense to them. Things that they should say, oh, that makes perfect sense. It's twisted because God gave them up. They suffer at the hand of God, not only a denying of their very soul, but the body also. God places desires on these, God God places diseases on these type of people that it is very clear that it is not, it is because of the type of sin that they enter into. Sodomites regularly transmit diseases that can be traced back to the behavior of being a sodomite. People today are so hard, brethren, that instead of saying, let us repent and turn to God, they said, no, we need to pour more money into investigating why this goes on. We need to do some more studies on what, how to eradicate AIDS and STDs. How, how can we help not to just get rid of these things? There's only one answer, and that's Jesus Christ. And, but they don't want to do that. Instead of turning to God, their creator, they turn their back on him and say, we're going to take care of this ourselves. And we see how well that's worked out for them. The cure is Jesus, brethren, turning from their wicked ways and living for Christ. As time goes on, these diseases become worse, and in areas of the world never seen before, these diseases have continued to spread 
and become more and more larger than ever before. But why doesn't somebody stop and say, whoa, it's because of we turning from God. It's because God gave them up. More time isn't needed to do more studies. More money isn't needed to dump into the situation. God is the answer. More education. That's not the answer. God is the answer. And it's like a freight train, brother, that once it gets going, it starts off slow, but it gets to the point where there's no stopping it. You can't stop a freight train once it gets going. At, at, in the beginning, you can put the brakes on, but hey, where's that point where no, there's no turning back? There's no, you don't want to play with this. You don't want to mess around with God. You don't know how to dabble in these things because you don't know where that, that point is of no return. As, the, as they did not like to retain God and their knowledge, God gave them over. We cannot make it without God, brother. If something is in our focus, who's drawn us away from God, Cut it off. Amen. Because God will make a judgment. God will make the judgment. See, later on in verse in uh, chapter 2, we're going to see that this is not for us to judge. God is the judge. Yeah. Now, I remember when I first became a believer, a big thing was promise keepers and getting uh, a partner so that you could talk about these things. Yeah. And we're going to keep each other accountable and everything. God is keeping you accountable. Amen. He's the one who sees. He, there, you can get accountable, a person as an accountable partner, but they can't see what God can see. Amen. He's your accountable partner. He's the one who keeps you accountable. Amen. You you seek to please him. Amen. And these things will not happen. Amen. As men continue in sin and turn from God, God will let them go. We see here that if we're not for the, if it were not for the hand of God, we will fall fast and hard and without a bottom. There's no safety net to this. You're just gonna keep on falling, and you there's no guarantee that you're gonna recover. They did not like to retain God in their knowledge. We were made to seek God. That's what we are made for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're not seeking God, what is your purpose? Yeah. You don't have a purpose. So God turns you over. And once he does that, death is the end result. We are told in Acts 17, 27 that God is not far from every one of us. Mm -hmm. So who's got the excuse What's the excuse? It's because God's so far. Well, forget it. It's not, it's not even worth it. God's so far away. I, I can't do it. Forget it. No. God's not far from each one. If you really want God, he's right there. See, that's, that, what, what, what are you culturing an appetite for? The things of this world or the things of the Lord? <laughs> It's not impossible to get close to God. God has set it up so that you can draw near to him. If we are not seeking him and spending our days longing to be close to God, we have no point. God has placed us here and now with the tools we need to pursue him. We were created to run to God. So his eternal power would be revealed. As our appetite grows for God, he will give us a greater hunger. See how God works? He'll increase it. He'll, give it, he'll make it so that the things of the world will just, like the, the him, grow strangely dim. And the things of him will grow stronger in your appetite. And nothing else will even it'll satisfy you but God. Now you, you just get to the point where nothing else can satisfy you. For all that do not develop an appetite for God, he will turn them over to hunger for the things that, will, that they really want. 
which will be in the end their destruction. God's people see that God is an advantage. God is an advantage to us. As closer we get, the more we see that. They see that the light, they see the light and they want it. They grapple for it. They wrestle to get the blessing. This is the way God's people are. They, they desire the blessing. Some do not see the light as a good thing. Darkness is what they want. God is rejected. The one who gave them life is not what they desire. They want to do evil. Sin is what they want, not God. And God does not satisfy a person who hungers for darkness. The carnal mind, brethren, is enmity against, no matter what people say, against God for it is not subject to the law of God neither indeed can be Romans 8 7 right. Amen. see the things of God are foolishness to these people what happened was it because they are born that way and they can't help it I, you hear this today well this is just the way some people that's the way they are born okay this is the way they're made. God made them like that. No, it's because of sin. It's because of sin that caused this condition. As they feed the appetite for sin, it grows more and more and rejects God. Man cannot live a life of sin and still pursue God. When the light comes into a room, darkness has to go. To have darkness, the light must leave. The light is dominant. So if a person longs for the dark, the light must be rejected. And this is what they've done with God. They have a hunger for darkness, and they've rejected God. I don't care if they say they love God all day long. They've rejected God. This is why we must be born again. There is no such thing as a little sin. It consumes and corrupts everything. John 3.3 3 says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. It's not possible. 1 Peter 1.23 says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth Forever. Amen. Amen. See, a little see, a little sin corrupts uh -huh. and can't be worked with. Amen. It's got to be done away. Mm -hmm. You must be born again. Nothing good comes from sin. If given time, it does not get better. Left alone, it gets worse. Like it, on my truck at work, I have a governor. When I'm going down the hill at a certain speed, it shuts off my engine. Just, just won't even go any faster. Just, even if I'm going downhill, it just goes to a certain point. There is no governor to sin. Yeah, yeah. Sin just wide open. Yeah, it just will keep on going. It goes faster and deeper and builds up strength. And it doesn't have an end. It has to be done away with. So if given time, it doesn't get better. Left alone, it gets worse and ha just continues to to push on, kind of like you, you take cancer. Once cancer gets to a certain point, it can't be stopped. Doctors will tell a patient, I'm sorry, at this point all we could do is guess how long you got. We, you, there's no turning back. We're not even sure if you're going to live tomorrow. We're thinking maybe six weeks, maybe a, a year. But at this point, we can't do anything for you. See, you don't want to get to that point. Mm -hmm. yeah. Seek God now while he may be found. Amen. Don't live your life that you may be, that God will let you go. You want to live close enough to the Lord that it's his righteousness that keeps you. This is the condition of all without God. 
death. And it's only a matter of time. This is the love of God that he had, that as we retain him in our knowledge, he has made a way that we can enter into life by the way of Jesus Christ. So much for saying people that reject God because they haven't been told. The scriptures say, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Well, you're born this way. You're just born. It's not your fault. You can't help it. No, you take pleasure in it. You know. This is the Holy Spirit talking. They know. They know what they're doing. They know they're rejecting God, but they don't care. They take pleasure in what they're doing, and they want it. Some may reason that they live in darkness, but it's not their fault. God loves them anyway. They just, they can't stop it. Here, we're, the Holy Spirit saying, no, that's not the way it is. They know what they're doing, and they've rejected God. Knowing. They know enough. They may say, well, I don't know. Well, yes, you know. You know enough. God's given you enough to know that enough for you to pursue him. So, so saying, I didn't know, that's not going to hold up on judgment day. Because we all, God has given us all enough to know to pursue him. They may not know all, but they know enough. On judgment day, there will be no excuses. The very fact that we are here is enough to wonder, where, why are we here? What is our purpose? And for someone to reject that, that's on them. God's going to give them up. Satan has gone out of his way, brethren, to direct people to discredit God. They have spent great amounts of time to discredit God. And they're going to be accountable for that. To all who are foolish enough to believe this lie, it is a judgment from God. God has judged them. It's God who's judged them. From Adam and Eve until today, we see how God deals with sin, death. All have come short and are worthy of death. For all who refuse to retain God in their knowledge, they have the right to die. <clears throat> they know what their rights are. It doesn't matter what they say. They know. And they still refuse God. God has given them what they need to pursue him. They refuse it. Not only that, they approve of those who practice them. They encourage them. We have a place today called Hollywood that not only do they encourage ungodliness and embrace it, they give out awards for it. The worse you are, the better they accept you. See, this is, this is just vile. In the eyes of the Lord. Amen. To say, hey, I see that you've done much evil. And I'm going to reward you for that. But this is the day that we're living in. Those who reject God are rewarded by others for doing the same. Amen. Approving is making friends with them. Spending time with them. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Amen. James 4.4. 4. That's, that's pretty strong language, but it's the truth. Amen. You pursue the world, you have just made yourself an enemy of God. Uh -huh. They could tell you all day long that God loves you unconditionally, but you have made yourself an enemy to God. Being, friend, being their friend is not a help, brother. They need God before it's too late. 
Man must see that nothing can help more than the gospel. Man must have the righteousness of God to be accepted. And God is not far from every one of us. God has made a way that we may pursue him and that we may embrace him and that we may have the knowledge of God and be with him for eternity. Thank you, brethren.